Yeah. Hey, mate. Yep. Yeah, I've heard they're doing a guard of honour for them, so. No problem. Good afternoon and welcome to the National Basketball Centre here in Bellevue, Manchester for the headline act of this magic triple header live on the Sportsman and it doesn't get much bigger, much more appetising than a showdown between these two old rivals, the champions Halifax Panthers and the challengers the Leeds Rhinos poised to go at it again. It's been a feast of wheelchair rugby league from the Betfred Wheelchair Super League so far here today. I'll remind you what has happened so far in a moment, but this is how we line up today. 
Uh, the Rhinos patched up a little bit with Ewan Clibbons missing and a couple of uh, their key men suffering illness this week as well. I've been speaking with Tom Halliwell and Nathan Collins who have both brought an illness back, they think, from England camp um, and around about 80% fit, they say, uh, today. But they're both there starting, Nathan Collins, Josh Butler, Nathan Mulhall, the star man, England's World Cup winner, Tom Halliwell with Jody Boyd-Ward and the two options off the interchange bench for the head coach, James Simpson, are Dan Cutts today and Verity Smith. What about Halifax? Well, they've got a, a big-name absentee of their own. No Seb Bashara, their World Cup winner, misses out today, but still plenty of pedigree in that Halifax Panthers side. They line up with Rob Hawkins starting with the old warhorse Wayne Boardman. Jeremy Borson has made the trip, the Frenchman, with Kieran Johnston and Tom Martin completing the starting five. Three options off the interchange bench, and they are Jordan Holt, Tom Green and Nathan Holmes. So this is match three of three here this afternoon of the third magic round from the Betfred Wheelchair Super League. Already today, victories for London and for Hull FC. A real thriller to get us underway here at Bellevue at midday today. Saw the London Roosters edge out the Wigan Warriors. It was a topsy-turvy game. London always just keeping themselves ahead, but Wigan just wouldn't go away. 38-30 it finished, and Hull FC just pulling away the last 10-15 minutes or so of our second match that you heard live and exclusive on the Sportsman to beat Warrington Wolves 62 points to 24. We're expecting this to be a cracker. Let's hope so. As Leeds and Halifax, the two heavyweights in this league, although London will have something to say about that, because right now they're level with the Rhinos on 10 points as we welcome the two sides into the National Basketball Centre. Terrific facilities here. Here in South Manchester at Bellevue. The Rhinos led out by Nathan Collins in their traditional blue and amber. And Halifax in their equally familiar blue and white stripes. And then the round of applause to recognise Tom Halliwell, Tom Coyd and James Simpson for their recent honours. Tom Coyd, MBE, Tom Halliwell, OBE and James Simpson, MBE receiving their round of applause and so too Sebastian Bashara missing out today but an MBE in the King's honours. Four members of England's victorious Rugby League World Cup winning squad. Alongside the chief executive, the man in charge of it all, John Dutton, awarded an OBE. Terrific individual recognition, but also for the sport of wheelchair rugby league. To have such lofty recognition too is testament to the progress that this terrific sport has made. Ollie Cruikshank is our referee today. Looking forward to this one. Having a bit of a chat to him beforehand, and we are poised to go. Four o'clock start here for the Rhinos against the Halifax Panthers. And Tom Coyd, England's World Cup winning head coach, MBE, fresh from the court, joins us up in the commentary gantry. Uh, many congratulations, first of all. What a moment for all of you. Fresh off the court and fresh up the ladder. <laughs> Out of breath. I should have given you a few minutes, really. No, it's, uh, it's brilliant. Um, it's been nice to, to see each other since it happened and just um, enjoy the moment together, really. And the, the great moments keep coming since the World Cup. We, we thought after November 19th that, you know, it had peaked and it would just start petering out, but... Um, from BBC Sports personality, getting hosted at Hampton Court Palace, 
how the league's going this year, like the, the accolades and the recognition keeps coming. So it's, um, it's testament to how good our game is and how it's growing. Absolutely right. Wonderful personal recognition for for the four of you, plus John Dusson. But yeah, as, mm. as I mentioned, what it what it says about the sport that it is in the public domain now. I think that really is the big thing, isn't it? Yeah, we're up there with all the big games now, and um, yeah, to our captain Tom, who was so pivotal in the final, getting an OBE is just absolutely amazing. The fact that you know he gets recognised just like all the great British sports people that have gone before him, it shows you. Um, it shows you that people think of wheelchair rugby league as a, as a bona fide sport now, and, and as it should be. Well, here we go then. And that was an interesting start, wasn't it? Strange. <laughs> I'm not sure what the tactic it's was. That there. hot potato from the kickoff. Yeah, he didn't want it. Two. Rhino's kicking to Halifax, who immediately launched it straight back. And they could be made to pay Three. here because Halliwell is on the ball straight away Three. with Butler taking it on. Then it's with Collins, back to Halliwell. You'll see that link up fairly often this afternoon. There we go again with Collins and Halliwell. Both a little bit under the weather this week. It's Halliwell again, throws a long one, he can't take it. Butler and Halifax will be the big sigh of relief. Really hot in here today, George. You've probably said that on the games going previous. but um... I, I did wonder w whether that was a key reason for all the... The handling errors that we, yeah. we don't we're not normally seeing from these the no. elite sides in the game no not at all not at all it's um obviously sticky and humid especially inside a sports hall here there's not much wind to to kind of wick the sweat away as well so it might be might just be one of those games today and the team that looks after the ball the best will come out on top because they're fairly evenly matched oh and there's the first handling error albeit that wasn't anything to do with the conditions that was just a, a really tricky ball to take around at the ankles of Wayne Boardman. So Leeds will have another opportunity here. When you're ready, Tom. Yeah, there was one point during uh, your game, your, your London Roosters game, I could just see you down beneath that contrary position, holding both hands. I said, just keep hold of the ball with both hands. <laughs> I think there was a knock on straight after that, wasn't there, as well? Immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Did the opposite of what you said. Maybe it's always easy to stop it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Halliwell with the offload. This is good from Lees. Butler takes it on. Boyd Ward no. far right. Away. Collins back inside. Wonderful. They're still flowing. Halliwell towards the post. Does a 360, pops it back up to Collins. Great ball retention for the Rhinos. It's with Halliwell. Everyone thought Collins had it. Two. Eventually, Halliwell is stopped. Flick Here pass to Collins. Butler will score. Great play. And the Rhinos, hammering at the door early, get the points of their pressure deserved. 4 0 with a kick to come. Real simple try. Fantastic distribution from Tom and then Nathan following him. And Josh Butler's always been a good ball carrier. But what he's added to his game this season is that maturity of, of a developing young man. And, and that was one of the things that um, I think at Leeds and, at, and when he's been involved with England, he's been asked to work on. So, um, yeah, you see him popping up at the right time there and, and getting the first four-pointer on. Lightning fast start from the Leeds Rhinos. They're looking to uh, re-establish their two-point lead at the top of the table. And maintain their 100% start. Collins with the first attempt at goal off the back of that Butler try. James Simpson, the head coach, on the court, having a few words already. As Collins lines this one up, no mistake at all, pops it over. And it's been all leads early, they have a 6-0 lead. Yeah, probably the start I expected. Lead, leads to go well first. Halifax are a team that runs hot and cold, and when they run hot, they're pretty much impossible to stop. Um, for Leeds, it will be about weathering the storm, really, and, and trying to be the steady team, which, which fits the personality traits they have in that group. Uh, facts, no doubt, in the next 10 minutes, all, all score in bunches. Boardman with a mid-range restart. Two bounces, Collins takes it on. One. Yeah, your, uh, your victory, 38-30, wasn't it, over win? Relatively low scoring by, by wheelchair standards. Two. It's kind of like a, that was a Super League score, really. 
Well, the, it's quite that, tight for a long time. I've been really proud of our last two races' performances because uh, we played Wigan uh, a couple weeks ago. That was the last game we played and only conceded 16 points. Mm. Hold that thought, little dab over the top. Collins is after it, Boardman's there. The big man wins the chase. Can he get out? Look at that, bodies around, around the ball Borson, still going. I beg, you to, beg your pardon, it was Jeremy Borson that time. The other big man, if you like. Did really well. That'll be a big confidence lift, I think, that for Halifax. Yeah, it will. The way they dealt with that. If they can complete this set, they'll be settled in. And they made decent inroads from their own line. Three. That's the dangerous Rob Hawkins wearing two. As Boardman just says, come and get me and I'll offload. That's exactly what he does. Hawkins takes it on once more, looking for a bit of court to play Four. with. Butler rips off the tag. Borson back inside. Hawkins Four. once more. Another quick play of the ball to the Frenchman. Well, he's picked out the only Three. rhino back there. Halifax playing too quick for their own good at the moment. Jeremy kicked the ball with no chases, and now Leeds have gone half the field in two plays. They just need to slow things down. Oh, you're right, I've noticed that. They're going so quick. Two. He's being turned over, and they're not set defensively. Not, not even close to being ready. But it's a style that suits them when they're all going together, but when they're disconnected, they're all at sixes and sevens. Jody Boyd Ward eventually unlocks the chairs, gives it to Halliwell. Butler takes the collision, bounces off it, and continues his progress upfield. In touch, oh, is he? Millimeters in. Wow. Four. Millimeters in the field of play. Collins oh. goes early once again. Halliwell's not going to get that one, I don't think. Borsan's there. I think that's the game plan today. Nathan Collins, the last time they played each other here in the, the grand final last season, Nathan kicked him to death. And oh, that's a huge contact from Collins. Shot. Ball, strike. ball steal, I think. Yes. Or offside. They've given offside the officials. Ball yeah, last season's grand final, Nathan Collins' kicking game was out of this world, and it almost got him over the line. So I, I would be surprised if they didn't employ a similar tactic today. So Halifax around about halfway. Trading to that Josh Butler try. Six points to nil, seven minutes in. The third match of a magic triple header here in Manchester this afternoon. And there's another handling error. It's gone backwards, says the referee. I think he's right, actually. Yeah. Certainly dropped it, but he was going back towards his own stick. So Halifax able to take it on. Here, here. we go. Here we go. Goes early now. Then the chase is on. Halliwell's got a good starting Clean. spot. Saw it coming, didn't he? He's got himself back there. He might get forced behind his own post here. Does well. Butler was lined up by Jeremy Borsan. Strong carry. On me. Strong carry. Jeremy's a big fella, and he just bounced right off of him. Hickam leads with Nathan Mulhall. Three. Halliwell, first receiver, left side. Looking to promote, gives a 360. Play on. And then underarms it. Back to Mulhall. Four. It's going to be Collins this time to take it on. Butler wants it, goes oh. backwards, and Halliwell evades the first attempt to tackle, and he still goes. And offloads backwards. Back. Bit of a Hail Mary. Picked up single bounce by Mulhall. He's received a bit of French treatment there. And now Halliwell over halfway. Nathan Mulhall, who made the controversial switch. This could be a dropout. Oh, look at that chase. Big hit. They're really pushing for each other, Leeds. The last kick that went in, there was three or four defenders around the ball, and Jeremy Borson did Jeremy Borson things yeah. and made it out, but it looks like they're pushing the chairs today. Drilled into the deck. Picked up by Halliwell. One. Sense the second try might be coming here. Mulhall. Two. Collins. Boyd Ward. Three. Halliwell right side. Yeah, there he goes. Just Butler for company here. Almost runs right into his teammate. Four. It'll be Collins right side. That's the play. Boyd Ward hanging out right. Collins towards the line on his own. Gets tagged. Four. 
by Borsan. This is the last. Halliwell puts the kick Ooh. in. Oh, it's just about a clean pickup by Borman. Wants to quick play the ball here. Defended well so far, Halifax. Yep, proper Super League contest we got. Johnson to Borson. Ferocious out there at the moment. Ten minutes has gone in the blink of an eye. I'm sweating up here. Um, it is the hottest place in the building, <laughs> yeah, really right, where we are. <laughs> Borden has gone early again. Now then, where's Ooh. that going to go? Be Halifax ball. It was reached out by a rhino. So another opportunity for the Panthers. Big early moment in the game, this, because if Leeds stick out and get the ball back, they'll get a huge lift. But obviously, if facts score, we're back to evens. Short play, and it was Rob Hawkins Whoa. clattering into traffic. Then Jeremy Borson wants it. Two. Boardman hanging back. He's going to have to go again. In fact, they switch and Tom Martin goes in. Driving at the post, the big man wearing 17. Borsum's right side, Boardman left. Flicks it back and a penalty. Given away in a brilliant field position by Halifax, who will be very, very frustrated at that. Yeah, it's a shame for Tom Martin. That was a really strong carry. He was all elbows and shoulders, wasn't he? Wriggling his way through there, but... Uh, Leeds got the chocolates. I think there's just a lot more composure in this Leeds outfit at the moment. Halliwell comes over to this near side just to stock up on Red his tags. Yep. Allows everyone just a few seconds breather. What has been a breathless start. Good oh, touch finder. Oh, it's a big one, that. And Collins up towards halfway. Six nil the Rhinos lead early Josh put the try Nathan Collins goal wins already for London and for Hull FC One. here in Bellevue today Halliwell Two. not sure Mulhall wanted that <laughs> there you go Nathan <laughs> Halliwell now then a bit of broken play Butler that's a good angle they're on it oh, and he gets a just big a contact from Jeremy Borsan who just pushes him just to make sure yeah, could have been given a penalty yeah. there, Leeds. He was already going down. He wasn't getting up from that one. Halliwell. Mulhall. Collins. Early ball. Get after that, he says to Halliwell. It's going to give you a dropout, is it? Could be even more. Oh, Halliwell's put it down and appeals for the try, which may be awarded here. Halifax have made a right mess of that behind their own posts. And the referee awards the try. Went, no real right to score there, when Tom, when there but Leeds there. have been gifted that a second. Contact, I've got to say, that I don't on. see a massive difference between the two teams when they're playing through the field and, and they're taking their carries. Both sides have got really good ball carries, but Leeds, when they kick the ball through, whether it's to just turn the ball over close to the Halifax line or an attacking kick like that one, they're first of the ball every time. You can just see them flooding and swarming, and it looks like they've just got a bit more energy about them in that side of the transition game than Halifax do at the moment. Yeah, that seemed to be a kick that Halifax should have dealt with. It bobbled around like rugby balls do. Just a split second of panic, and Tom Halliwell took full advantage. Before you know it, he could be staring down the barrel of a 12-0 deficit here. Off the back of a pretty decent period of possession for Halifax. Yes, absolutely. As soon as they get their first points on the board, they'll be settled. But who, who knows when that will come? If Leeds, you know, keep rolling forward, it might not be until the end of this half. Yeah, they've got a foothold in this game now, the Rhinos. James Simpson, their head coach now, the man in charge. Ambassador for the victorious World Cup campaign. Tidy. Collins pops over another two from two, and it's a 12-0 Leeds Rhinos lead. Almost a point a minute somehow for Leeds. And the drum's going. <laughs> Doesn't he look good in the coach's polo, James Simpson? Yeah, it's like he was Made for it. born to wear that, That's wasn't it? he? Strutting around. Wonderful character in our game. Isn't it? 
incredible speaker as well. Oh, he's fantastic. As you all know. He's a pro. I mean, not only does he have a... Oh, hello. It's a dropout. Not only does he have a heck of a story to tell us, a lot of these wheelchair players do, but... Stay behind. Yeah, he's, he can capture a room with it. Yeah, he's, he's just a really engaging guy. He, um, he won't mind me saying he sticks out like a sore thumb with the ginger beard, the ginger hair, <laughs> the mechanical legs. Yeah. And um, he's really leaned into that as James. I've, I've marveled at the way he's spoken in front of primary schools or CEOs. Yeah. Doesn't matter who the audience is, he, he captures them straight away. One. So Halifax from the Rhinos dropout have the ball back, albeit in their own Two. half. We've had the first quarter hour gone. Leeds have a... 12-0, two-try advantage. But it's Halifax's turn with Johnson. Four. Here's Borson. Good flick ball. Taken on by Five. Martin, but he's tagged. This is going to be the last. Boardman's hanging back left side. It's a dab down the touchline. Nice kick. Borson get there, he can. Can he force him back behind the One. post? He can as well. Really good chase, Halifax. Oh, but they've overcooked it. They've overdone it. They'll be gutted there because they turned the ball over right on the try line and we're in with a shout for a goal line dropout. And now it's Leeds ball on the halfway line. That was a big call, wasn't it? It was almost the perfect kick and chase. It really was. But ultimately, it's given Leeds a little bit of a piggyback back up the court here. The Collins, two from two from the kicking tee. Yeah, no surprises there. He strikes him nice, does Nathan. More Hall. Halliwell. Elusive as ever. Yeah, both he and Collins tell me they've been feeling unwell this week. They didn't really know how well how unwell they were until they started playing, so <laughs> they seem all right, don't they? It was funny, um, well, it wasn't funny, but... Um, Tristan Norfolk, who plays for Hull FC, has been training. There's Halliwell. Collins is herring after it. Boardman needs to defuse that. Kick. Just about drop does it. It will be the drop up. Leeds kicking is on today, George, I tell you. They're definitely leaning into that in their game plan. But yeah, I was saying Tristan Norfolk's been playing out of his skin for Hull FC and, and came into our England camp last weekend. Unfortunately, came in with a sickness bug. And has given it to everyone. <laughs> and given it to everyone. <laughs> so named and shamed, eh? Named and shamed. <laughs> Halliwell with a pick up. Oh, Kieran Johnston was on the deck. And tried to tackle from there. He's going to need some mechanical repair, so he's coming off here. Well, they've got four at the moment. There's no one ready to come on. The wheel is bent on his on his left hand side. Well, he's come off, but no one's ready to come on. He was yelling, Nathan, 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 and Holmes was looking the other way. So reorganising now. Our Halifax trailing 12-0. And they're going to be defending their line shortly. Really strong middle forward type player, Nathan Holmes. Great ball carrier, aggressive defender. He might give Halifax the lift they need. He's got the look of a young A.D. Gardner about him. Very good call. Yeah, <laughs> I would take that. If he can finish. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to see. <laughs> One. He was a great winger, was A.D. Gardner. Yeah, he was. I remember commentating on a couple of his, his tries in a Great Britain shirt back in the day. Probably going back 15 years. Broke my heart many times as a childhood Warrington fan as well. No, I bet, yeah. Did that to most Super League clubs, to be fair. Halliwell leads under the post. Great opportunity to set up here. Collins, reverse ball to Halliwell. They're coming back this outside way, him. Should have given it, shouldn't he? Halliwell Look this time on. holds on. Four. Collins, well taken by Butler and he's still going. He's got Halliwell with him. Excellent tackle. Oh, George, here we go. Holmes. Oh, he's got there. Try. Collins. Points to Halliwell and Butler. It was his finish. And Lees are just so ruthless that close to the line. A couple of times they've been down here, Leeds, given Josh Butler early ball, and he's caused Halifax a lot of problems, and on the very next play, they're all pulled out of shape. Collins is over in the corner. I like the way Josh is coming onto the ball. He's causing Jeremy out wide a lot of problems. 
And it was just a quick play. Halliwell behind him to Butler. Spotted that Collins had half a yard in the corner and found him. There you go, still got a cold, you can see. <laughs> <laughs> They've just got a beautiful connection, uh, Nathan and Tom. When, the way they wrap around each other that close to the goal line, it's not um, you go here, I go there. It's just a, a feel thing. They've got a feel for each other and what the other one's thinking. When they're on, they're absolutely on. And it's still, they're just under a point a minute still, Leeds. Hasn't felt like that kind of game. No, it hasn't. It hasn't. At the end of the day, it's the team who takes the opportunities. Leeds and are doing that. Leeds are doing that, yeah. Yeah, they're razor sharp in the final third. Uh, Halifax have just been a little bit too quick for their own good. A step ahead of themselves, really. Collins has got two from two. Can he convert his own try? Didn't really need to ask the question, Beauty. I don't think. Three from three. He That's eats those three. Mil lead lead. <laughs> yeah. Eighteen nil, and we played seventeen and a half. Another look at that. Looks so easy when you play like that. That's just a connection, isn't it? Knowing where your teammates are. Nice catch pass from Josh there. That's not something that was in his game to begin with, but definitely something he's developed over the last couple of seasons. So suddenly, yeah, clean. Oh, the facts could strike here. Who's got that? Leeds ball, one. Oh, Back Collins one. has just about kept hold of it. Tough it call there for Halifax, I think. They've had a couple of them. A couple of 50-50s haven't gone Halifax's way. Unfortunately for them, every time Leeds look like getting close to the line, they score. Three. Big contact moment, Nathan Holmes, who's made a big impact since coming on. Yeah, takes no backward pushes, Nathan Holmes. Halliwell. Big hit by Borson. Butler goes looking for him. Five. A little bit of a wrestle. I think his tyre's gone, Jeremy. Oh, or is it Tom's? Tom no, Tom's. Halliwell's lost a, lost a wheel here. We're playing on. Well, Dan Cutts has come on. So Halliwell, he's come off. One. To sort his wheel out. That was a very swift substitution made by the Rhinos. And Halifax, three. can they exploit? Right, they're flying. Oh. Penalty Halifax. I think they just wanted to get on with that, you know. Play advantage, I think. Yeah, that, that helped Leeds out, you it know. It really did. And now Leeds can get set and get ready. Yes, it's, uh, it's taken the tackle count back to zero and given them an extra five metres or so. But really, they could have kept moving up to the far side. Leeds were in trouble. I think Halifax would take two players on the front, front foot rather than six on the back foot. Everyone's overrun that. He wasn't quite ready to let it go, Tom Martin. Get back! Wayne Boardman's currently yelling at him. You don't want that. There he goes. <laughs> oh, take that if you can. Backwards. Blimey. Two. He just flicked it into the face of Jeremy Borson. Jeremy. They're, they're still going with it towards the post. Brilliant run from Borson. Offloads. Now then, can he get there? Towards the line, he's in touch. Great defence. Rob Hawkins ran out of room. And look at the celebrations from the Rhinos, led by Halliwell, who's already back on. Nathan Mulhall, off-season transfer from Halifax to Leeds. Made the play there and will have enjoyed that very much. Yeah, he's got a massive smile on his face. What a try saver. Yeah, that's great chair position. He just shut the door on him. One. Well, Halifax at 18-0 down. I've got to take each of these opportunities. Holmes and Butler collide in there. Mulhall. So Halliwell back on. Early kick. And Collins and Butler are after this. Going to go into touch left side. So Dan Cutts got about 20 seconds, I think. White line, Rob. Just a little taster. <laughs> yeah. he's, already, he's already attacking the, uh, the isotonic drinks down beneath us. <laughs> Blame the mugginess. Uh, yes. <laughs> Here come Halifax. So I think he would have been happy with that long kick there, Tom. Just try and win the field position battle. Keep putting pressure on Halifax. Three. Martin. Four. Five. 
Now then, Boardman, great timing. Dab over the top. It, to himself, it could be. Room service. Has he got balance. there, Rob Hawkins? Ref saying tackle, I think. He's getting tackle did, complete Rob. as he was chasing. That was a tight one. Don't you love it when the ball just pops right up? I'm not sure he was intending that to him. Maybe he was, you know. Maybe it was to himself. Yeah, I think it was. Well, Definitely initially, a tackle, he though. was going to Borsal and got it wrong, but looking at the eye line there, I'll give him credit for that. <laughs> 25 minutes of race past. Leads 18 0 up with Wait. Collins. Then Mulhall taking it from Borsal this time. Ball's come out. Halifax looking to see if they're going to get a decision here. I don't think they are. It's not looking likely. I think that'll just be play on. Back a bit just gets a momentary breather. Four. In the heat of the afternoon, oh. another early one from Collins. Halliwell's got a bit too much to make up this time, but they may get a drop out. Halliwell's got there. And he's done well. He's going to be in touch, far side. Yeah. Crowded out by the Rhinos. Wayne, come here, please. Jody, come here. Wayne. Someone's getting a talking Wayne, to here, here I think, George. Oh, it's you know who. Going to be to both your teams. I need to calm it's it Boyd down. Ward and Boardman. Anyone speaks back to me again, I'm going to go into my I think pocket. it's just okay. a captain's so huddle. And then we'll start. Interesting. Yeah, I haven't seen too much foul play in this game. No. It's been aggressive. Yeah, you don't associate foul play with this sport you no. set the aggressive side of it absolutely that's what makes it so Wait, watchable but on. very rarely crosses the line absolutely so that was an interesting uh, okay, let's go. interruption from the referee Oli Krukshek here's Butler leads fancy another every time they've been on the line they've scored Butler Halliwell and Collins so far it's with Tom Halliwell then it's with Collins they like this corner, it don't they? Butler they're just drawing the tackle and offloading as late as possible. Collins wrestling towards the post. They'll have to come back and play this. Holmes is going to need to get back in the line first. Halliwell is first receiver to his right. Quick play to Butler. What a change of direction. Fantastic. And what a try. Josh Butler with a beauty, his second. And Leeds now streaking clear. If we see the wide angle here, Leeds was set up so wide as if they were going to throw a big shift play, and what that did is stretched out the Halifax defence, and then Rob had to cut in to cover Josh, who swing his hips, and scored an easy try down the middle. Fourth try, fourth unanswered try for Leeds, and the easiest conversion attempts on the way from Nathan Collins. It's going to be a 24-0 Halifax Panthers deficit. After 28 minutes here, it's been incredibly efficient from the Rhinos, the league leaders. Really uh, measured, just you know, kicking when they need to kick, turning the ball over confidently when it's not on and not forcing it, because you don't want to give away an eight-metre restart in this game and, a, and seven tackles. The field's so short that Halifax will be on their try line in no time. Just really astute game management. Here is Collins from bang in front. No mistake, 24 points to nil. Here's the Leeds Rhinos lead. The contacts just calm them down a little bit, a bit too hard. Okay. So we have another look at the latest try. Just that change of direction that confused Rob Hawkins. Couldn't get back. And George, I'm double buzzing now because I've got a text to say Medway Dragons running game team beat West Warriors wow. down in the London and South East League. There you go. What a bad day then. Two wins today. <laughs> Can't say fairer than that. Two wins and a guard of honour. <laughs> How was your Saturday? <laughs> Here's Halliwell. It's away. Collins. They look a bit frustrated, Halifax, now, you know. Yes, disconnected, poor body language. 
Halliwell would flick one. You'd say they need half time. Well, ideally they want points on the board then half time, but yeah, you certainly yeah. need to uh, Hold on. to put the plug in this flow at the moment. Another great kick. Halliwell's going round the long way. He still made good inroads. And they're going to get the ball back here. This is this is so reticent of what Nathan did to them in the grand final last year. Stay in the second the half, he just kicked and kicked and kicked, repeat set after repeat set. Yeah, clearly a game plan. James Simpson reacted with a big cheer when that went uh, lead his way, that last kick. Wait, wait, wait. That early kick in behind, well measured, He's Halliwell, as the ref seen. I'll just go back and take it again, take he it says. Tackle one. I'm no, just looking down at the Leeds head coach. Simpson's on the pitch more than when he was playing. <laughs> Can't keep off. <laughs> He's a ball of energy, James. I absolutely love him. Here's Butler, Collins, Halliwell, Mulhall, Boyd Ward. Great from Leeds. She gone out? Yeah. Yes, yeah, she has. Nudged over the sideline by Boardman there. Smart wingers defence. We've got nine minutes to go. If Halifax can score the next try, they'll take some energy into the half-time break. Yeah, they'll be saying to themselves now, yes, they need half-time, but they need, obviously, to try and get back on the board. If they score kind of last and first either side of half-time, yeah. suddenly it's a completely different-looking game. With the rate that tries can be scored in World Rugby League, it's never really over. Two. Boardman. Borson on this near right hand side. Away. Does well and offloads. Holmes caught in traffic, eventually tagged Five. by Collins. Boardman. All on. Just Smart punches. Kick. That's going to be too deep, I think. Story of the half. Everything that comes off Nathan's hands <laughs> turns to gold, and the ball keeps bouncing for Halifax. The cross, he just stabbed the fist at it and it was already already and always traveling with a bit too much pace yeah so leads his line remains intact 24 nil last seven and a half of the first period Halliwell's out of his chair one of the penalty there Tom you can see yeah. the shake of the head just springs back up plays it to Butler looking for a gap down the middle Collins is yelling for a penalty. There's the penalty. And he gets it. So there's more pressure coming Halifax's way. And just leaning over, Simo's, James Simpson's prowling the sideline. Yeah. He's got his hands all over this game plan, hasn't he? <laughs> That's another good touch finder from the Rhinos. They'll fancy adding more themselves before the half-time refreshments. Collins with the tap. Halliwell gets his hands on the ball. Swings it round to Butler. Halliwell is still lurking left side. We're tangled, we've got to let him reset, OK? One. It's going to be more Hall instead. Two. Here comes Tom. There is Halliwell. Drawing Three. two. Collins, they don't even need to look at each other, these two. Lovely flick pass. Boyd Walker oh. to get it down. He's gone pass. forward. There's few better sights in wheelchair rugby league than Nathan Collins flying round the back of the ruck out of a cannon and onto the ball. Well, Halliwell and Collins, they could play blindfold and still find each other. Honestly, they're so impressive, these two, and, and still so young in the game. The sky is the limit One. for the pair of them. Boardman. Away. Halifax with some expansive play. Two. Holmes wrestling away. Borson wants it now, gets it. Thinks about an early dab over the top. Decides against it, gives it to Rob Hawkins. Still going. going. Boardman, much better from Halifax. Over halfway, Halliwell with a big hit. Three. Felt by Kieran Johnston. It's Nathan Holmes again, little juggle and then... Right at Collins. Borson 
Well, there's no one chasing that. It sits up beautifully, and Aliwell, well, it's actually the best kick Halifax have come up with, unfortunately, the worst chase. <laughs> that could just be the, the turning point, though, that they need. They've got five minutes to go. Let's see what they can do with the ball here. Oh, it's a great clearing kick from Leeds. Good chase, too. For Sam. Boardman with a bit of room. Now then, it's an overlap here. Oh, he opted against it back in field. Johnston wanted it. It's Holmes instead. Change of direction, still going. And has lost the ball. That should be play on. He's just knocked it on. Halliwell. Amazing energy from Leeds. Whether they got the ball or they don't, they're all just pushing their chairs in as a one unit. Really impressive. One. Butler to Mulhall. Two. Halliwell. All on. Early kick with no chase this time. So Orson able to turn. One. And give it to Wayne Boardman. Immediately flings it to ooh, Two. Rob Hawkins. Boardman wants it straight back, gets it. He's lost Borson, there he is. Away. Keeping it alive, Halifax here. Holmes bypasses Collins. Two. Butler completing the tackle. Boardman pops up on this right side, switches it back to Holmes. His teammates have overrun him here, so he holds on and takes the hit Four. from Collins. It's going to be Boardman. Would he go early? All yes. On. Here comes Rob. Now Here is comes the Rob. chase. This could be good for Halifax. Oh. Can he get there? Not quite. A couple of evolutions of the ball. The revolutions of the ball, I should say. And that would have been a Halifax try. As it is, Leeds. Well, every, every kind of 50-50 bounce has gone the Rhinos way this first half. But they deserve it, you know. You make your own luck. And, and when you're getting bodies around the ball like, that, like Leeds do, the ball is going to bounce for you. That was tight. That was so close. For Hawkins. Last three minutes of the half. 24 0 to the Rhinos. You're watching live and exclusive. Magic round. Two. Betfred Wheelchair Super League Rugby League on the Sportsman. Collins. Still going. Three. Halliwell. Turning back. Going at the same line is Halliwell. It's going to be Mulhall. No one with him at the moment. This is the last. Looking for Halliwell. Here he is. Pops one over the top again, and that one is too deep for Leeds. If you're a Halifax fan, you're screaming, come on then, lads, what have you got? Two minutes to go. Send yourselves in at half-time with your tails up. Can they find something before the half-time whistle? When you're ready, Rob. There's some very hot, very tired bodies out there. The way. Yeah, Rob, Rob Hawkins' skin colours changed to pink. Yeah. Awesome, yeah, on. now then. It's a one-on-one -on -one chase. Collins has done brilliantly to get back. Just so much want and willingness in this Leeds team. Not letting Halifax have a sniff. Two. Butler to Mulhall. Three. Scrap Halliwell ball. early again. Collins. He was leading the chase. I don't know if he was told he was offside. He turned back very quickly. They might regret that play, Leeds. Yeah, for Sam. Two! Just wait till he's up. He managed to tip himself out of there, Nathan. Yeah. Not in any rush to get back up, either. No surprise there. The last minute of the first half. Full credit to this lead side so far. They have pushed their blood to water. Having having just coached in it earlier, it is baking. And no complaints. Their body language is still really positive. You know, they've given each other pats on the back. 
they just look the more likely still. Just a couple of checks on Nathan Collins. I'm pretty sure he's all right. I think he just wanted a few extra seconds there. Yeah, an experienced campaigner at his young age. Handshake with uh, Borson, who will now play the ball. Last minute of the first half. And it's given the Panthers a chance to cook something up here. So let's see what they come out with. Three! It's Borson again. Flicks it back. This looks good. Is there a two on one? Scrambling defense by Mulhall. Hall. Quick play, and he's in. That's what they wanted. That's what they needed. Halifax do strike just before the break they went in the play from in the Jeremy Borson. Vintage Halifax. No real structure. Push hard, play the ball quickly, push hard again. Well, boy, they needed that. It looked so easy. And that's what they can do when they stay connected and they work as a unit. So you know, Rob and Jeremy into playing together there. Then uh, Jeremy knows exactly how quickly Rob can re-tag and play that ball, and he arrived just at the right time. It's amazing how one try can make you think the game's right back on. Yeah. Well, we said, can they score just before and just after half-time? They've scored just before half-time. Let's, uh, let's see how they respond to the refreshment break. Boardman, no mistake from bang in front. And that is the last action of an extremely watchable first 40 of this final match. That was Borson's try, Halifax's first score. I don't know how much he'll change the team talk, but it'll certainly give a bit of belief to Halifax that they are still in this contest, a contest that prior to that, they will have felt they, they weren't in, Tom. Totally, and, and you're absolutely right, George, so watchable. There's six World Cup finalists either playing or coaching today, so um, it's the best athlete in the game putting on a show for us and if um, if forms anything to go by the second half is going to be even better it's um, like you say I'm not sure what the team talk will be from Halifax I think they just need to find the rhythm there's no magic bullet that that Boardman could say yeah. to this group they just need to get going together so four tries to one in the Rhinos favor let's have a look at the key moments Tom from this I don't want to know. I don't first know. half really don't. with the Rhinos <laughs> holding sway and I mean their attacking was, was wonderful to watch at times yeah they're probably the best team going forward with the ball in the league and, and it is underpinned by that connection between Halliwell and Collins it's poetry in motion when they get going and, and there's a couple times in that first half where that early ball to Josh Butler put Halifax under a lot of pressure yeah the link up play that, well, this is a gift of a try, really, for for Halliwell. He won't score many easier than that. It was, yeah, but in saying that, you could see the way Nathan, Nathan shaped the kick on the ball. Sure. He probably did want it to break off that way. So I've got to give credit to him. His kicking came has been 10 out of 10 in the first half. And then just a lovely change of direction. Yeah. Butler again. From Butler, again. Butler, who scored two of those four lead tries, and then right on the half-time whistle, mm. Jamie Borson. The Frenchman, a lifeline for Halifax. So we could have a cracker of a second half. I uh, hope you stay with us. We are looking forward to the Rhinos and Halifax after the break. It's Leeds in the lead, but Halifax are in there for a fight. Make no mistake about that. Half time on the Sportsman, the Rhinos lead Halifax by 24 points to six.
Adrian, thanks for talking to the sportsman. Uh, tell us uh, a bit, first of all, about Rugby League Cares and why you're doing this ride. So Rugby League Cares is the official charity of, of Rugby League, so anyone who's been involved with Rugby League from community level to professional level, uh, present players, past players, anyone who's struggling, uh, you know, whether it be financially or, or in any way, uh, emotionally, or so Rugby League Cares is a helping hand. Uh, they do a lot of work for... Uh, Players just, just finishing, you know, give him help, uh, career guidance, things like that. So uh, it's a charity, obviously very close to my heart, being involved with the sport for, for 30 years. And uh, that's why I'm doing it. And uh, yeah, I'm really, really uh, proud of that fact. And for those of us that, that watch on and watch you, you you giants of the game you know, in action, it's it's something for, for us to contribute, to, to say thank you for what you've done. Oh, no, yeah, that, that's great. I mean, if I can help it in any way, I'm more than happy to do that. And there's, there's a couple of uh, ex-players who, who normally get involved in these challenges and, uh, you know, delighted to uh, put my hand up and, and, and do my bit. Uh, you know, it is a challenge. It's very, very gruelling. Uh, but, you know, if it's if it's not uh, if it's not challenging, uh, then it won't be worth uh, donating, donating for. And what's the ride been like so far? Very, very tough. Uh, the first day we did over 90 miles. Uh, a lot of hills. Uh, the, the guy who organised it, John Ledger, is a bit of a uh, psychopath when it comes to uh, <laughs> planning the route. So uh, very, very tough first day, but we thought that was the, the, the hard one out of the way, but it wasn't. The second day we took on the, uh, the, the, the Tourmalet, which is a Tour de France route. So it's uh, 11 miles of just climbing, which was... Uh, it was hard going. We, we did a full morning shift, and then, then we had to take that on. It was it was only uh, uh, it was only 73 mile in the day, but there was 10,000 feet of climbing, which was uh, quite horrendous, really. Yesterday was uh, was uh, again. It was about about 77 miles, and that was the Col d'Aspin, which is another famous uh, route, and that, that was only eight miles of climbing. So uh, <laughs> it's been challenging. But we're halfway through now. We're just about to set off for, for day four. Uh, I think it's about 90 miles today. We, we, we're going through Toulouse, Carcassonne, ending up in Pepillon, which is uh, obviously all the all the famous French rugby league towns, which is great. Right. How does this compare to sticking your head in a million scrums? Uh, <laughs> very different. Uh, I mean, I was never a keen cyclist before these challenges, but uh, it's great. You know, jumping on a bike, it's uh, it, it, as hard as it is because the, the, the days are very long. It's, it's easier than uh, you know running a marathon because the the impact on your knees, but. When you get a great bunch of guys like this, uh, it does make it easier. But it is very tough. But uh, as, as I say, if it's not tough and gruelling, people wouldn't contribute.
So 24-6 ahead of the second half, the final instalment of what's been another gripping day. A triple header, our third magic round from the Betfred Wheelchair Super League. Victories already for London Roosters over Wigan, 38 points to 30. For Hull FC over Warrington, 62-24. At the moment, Leeds Rhinos set to retain their two-point advantage and 100% record at the top of the table. But Halifax have hope. They scored through their French international Jeremy Borson right on the stroke of half-time. Last play of the game before the break, which gives them something to build upon. Second half as the players somewhat wearily, reluctantly <laughs> made their way back out onto the court. What's been a very, very hot day in South Manchester. Very hot, certainly inside uh, the National Basketball Centre. But Tam Coy and Halifax at least have something to build upon. They just need to, uh, I guess, make sure Leeds don't start the way they started the first half. Yeah, one or two weary commentators up here as well, <laughs> potentially, yeah. George. Yeah, but, um, what's his seat in the house, this? <laughs> we're strapped in for hopefully a cracking second half. Halifax has got nothing to lose, obviously. Um, I was just looking at the, the, team, the two teams' body language coming, coming back in then, and Leeds, unsurprisingly, really relaxed, fairly jovial. Um, Nathan Collins is just the king of being laid back, so um, I'd expect him to take that in his stride coming into the second half. Halifax looking a little bit more spread out and, and worrying about their own thing. So I'd like to see him come out and be a bit more connected, but time will tell. Here we go then. At eight minutes to five on a Saturday afternoon. Wayne Boardman preparing to get us back on the way. What does the rest of the weekend hold? I'll be looking. I'll be a short cycle home and then Glastonbury. I think this evening, oh. Tom. I don't know about you. Friday, Friday, Glastonbury was absolutely unreal yesterday. <laughs> Everything I watched gave me goosebumps. So uh, yeah, I'll be joining you on that, George. Yeah, I'm looking f looking to get home for 6:45 when uh, the Manic Street Preachers are on one of the on the other stage. I think. Yeah, building up to that legend slot. Yeah. Who is it tonight? Is it Elton. Uh, no, it's Elton tomorrow. Is it Elton tomorrow? Yeah, I think it's Guns N' Roses tonight. Is it? Yeah. OK, even better. Three! I think, pretty sure. Anyway, we've got Rugby League to watch here. <laughs> Enough about that. Here's Halliwell. Four! And Butler, who is on a hat-trick already. Two tries to him. Wrapped up by... Borson, this is the last tackle. Hold Collins, on. just before contact, gets it away. Well taken. Yeah, he was ready for that one, Rob. Looking to deal with those kicks much better in the second half. Here is Borson. He's the man who could get things going for this Panthers team. That's good, this man. Good tempo, Halifax. Wade Borman oh, flicking the ball around. It's gone backwards. I think Collins is going to pick it up now. So Halifax have coughed up possession to the Rhinos in an area of the field. They weren't wanting to be doing that too many times. Composure screams James Simpson from the Leeds Rhinos bench. Butler. Mulhall. First receiver is Collins. Halliwell inside him. Here he is. Nice Reverse change. Reverse ball to Butler towards the sticks. And he is tagged, otherwise that could have been a try. If both tags came off. Butler will play right in front of the Halifax post here. He's waiting for Collins. Promotes to Halliwell. Halliwell. Good defence. Tackled eventually by Nathan Holmes. Butler. Collins. Dribbles one to himself. Yeah. Boardman does well. She says to Collins, there's no way you're pushing me behind the post. Hawkins brings the Panthers out. Borson. A swift 360 and promotes again to Rob Hawkins, the Halifax number two. 
Boardman this time. Well Another punch kick early. Borson's after it. So too is Kieran Johnston. Mulhall's going to have to deal with this, and he's hammered twice. <laughs> but pushed out of his chair, says the official. And that'll be Rhino's penalty. And Boardman's looking to the heavens because he put in a brilliant kick. Did everything right except the end bit. Yeah. You can see what they're trying to do, Halifax. Penalty in, in line with me. Just that little nudge. So Leeds find touch just on this near side. 24 nil, two for Josh Butler, one for Nathan Collins, one for Tom Halliwell, four from four from the kicking team for Nathan Collins. One. Leeds looking to maintain that two-point lead over Tom's London at the top of the table. Fine, three. Leads only two interchanges. They used Dan Cuts for about ten seconds, and other than that, that's been it. Oh, that's a great Jenny. point. I was just looking down to Leeds' bench, and, and they are development players rather than um, experienced Super League players. So as this half draws on, they will be going down to their kind of Four. reserve fuel tank, a lot of these Leeds players. Well, it's Halifax. Nathan Holmes has played most of the game so far off the bench. Yeah. Yeah. He's been one of the best players. There's Mulhall. Last tackle. Collins over the top. Well read Hawkins and Borson was there for any erratic bounce. Here we go. There will come a point where Halifax have just got to throw caution to the wind and start chucking it about a bit more. I wonder if that's now. Hawkins still going. Still going. Halliwell's with him. Just about gets to him, but he's out of the line now. Can they exploit? Away. Boardman takes the tackle and resets. Great scramble defence, Lee. Lawson takes it on. That was perfectly timed. Still going towards the post. Just caught him. Hawkins. Straight at Collins. Full was that credit the last? to Lee. It was. Full credit. Their scramble defence there. You know, Halifax, Borson, Hawkins absolutely flying at them. And they all got back, all got back in position. They're just pushing their chairs for each other. One. No Bashar, of course, for Halifax today. No Clibbons for Leeds. Plenty of World Cup pedigree out there. Two. Not least this man, Tom Halliwell, OBE. Three. Collins. Hold on. Another early one. Collins chases and wins the chase himself. Quick play to Halliwell. Tom Halliwell still going. Still going Halliwell, eventually tapped. This is the last, he's gone behind everyone. Mulhall will pick it up. Oh, no, he's knocked it on. It was a dreadfully difficult one to take. Tackled by the ball there, Nathan Mulhall. But how nice was that chip and chase from Nathan Collins? Well, here it is. Just Tom, saw some room to exploit. And then the chair went on. As we know, the kick's only as good as the chase. But there's no problem in anticipating it when you're the one after it. Yeah, beautiful classic what? rugby league play there. So 24-6, as it was at the break, six minutes into the second half. Live and exclusive. Betfred wheelchair Super League Rugby League on the Sportsman. The third magic round. Hawkins. Great offload. Oh, that's lovely to he's Borson. He's now then, gone. he's round boy Ward. Can he get the pass away? This could be a wonderful Halifax try. It's off the head of oh. Collins, and it's gone to ground, and leads somehow to fuse the danger. Beautiful set there from Halifax. They've got some change of direction in their game that's now, kind of flicking across from one side of the field to the other. Back, and you normally go. back Jeremy go, Borson to just keep pushing and score there. That could have been a... Uh, that was a try of the day contender, that. really was. Yeah, that would have been vintage Halifax. But it shows you what they have in the locker. Only three tries behind. One! Leeds haven't had a, a huge amount to go at so far, second half. No. No, this is the best spell Two. so far for Halifax the whole game. But Leeds are so dangerous they can score three. from anywhere, especially with this man in possession.
Halliwell. Oh, Butler's lost it. Has he gone back? No, the ref's got a whistle in his mouth. He's going to let it go. Let it go. Okay. Oh, okay. Decided against it. Five! Bring it back, Josh, in front. This is the last tackle. Leeds still in their own half. That was interesting. The referee looked set Stay to make behind. that decision. They're going to run it, Leeds. Halliwell. Butler eventually gets one away. Nathan Holmes is favourite here. Ooh. Oh, just about Eight. lets it go. He was in two minds there, Nathan, yeah. wasn't he? That's a funny old game, refereeing. It's so, so, I don't think we appreciate how difficult it is, you know. I was going to wait till the end, but the referees have been brilliant. Uh, they've all been the spot on, today. like in, in, in any sport. I mean, a game like this is, must be so hard to officiate. But, I mean, referees are always a hot topic. Seems so at the moment. We've had so much debate in, in Super League about bans and verbal abuse of referees and all sorts. Uh, they're unsung heroes to me. It's such a difficult job. There's a knock on by Borsan. Leeds will get it back. And what, what's probably underappreciated as well is the, the, the play the ball speed in wheelchair rugby league is so much quicker than running rugby league. The referees have got even less time to scan the field and, and get the decisions right. There's so much you need to do. It's There's physical fitness, there's mental fitness, there's sharpness, there's positioning. Yep. You've got to do it all and not get in the way of the game and get everything right because if you don't, you hear about it. And they're not in a position where they can be in the defensive line like a running rugby ref can because obviously they would get run over. So um, they've got to do all this from the sideline. Yeah, they've done a fantastic job, our officials, today. As of each of the six sets of players, including these two in the grand final, repeat. Leeds holding sway as it stands. Mulhall, Hall, Butler, two tries to his name so far. Halliwell left side with Collins, his mate. Josh just couldn't get the tag on quick enough there. So a change of direction. Halliwell comes back right. He's still looking to go left where Collins has stayed. And that's where he goes. Everyone's gone right. Can Collins find a way? Halliwell's outside him. He puts the kick up. Ooh. Oh, this was the early option. It's a penalty Second Halifax here. Penalty Leads offside. That was an interesting end of set. Yeah, cute little kick. It looked like they had the two on one in the end, but. Did. Halliwell almost dummied it to the right, didn't he? And then, you know, swung back to Collins' side. But it was well defended by Halifax. It's in line with the cross, Rob. Next try is massive, George. Yeah, if there is something in this game for Halifax, they have to be the scorers. Boardman and Borson linking up. One. Boyd Ward takes the tackle. And there must become a point where Leeds start to tie it. We mentioned the uh, the thin interchange bench they have. Also, two of their starting five have been ill all week. And it's hot. And here comes Hawkins. Hawkins, great turn of pace. Can he get through? Yes, he can. Halliwell won't get there. What a try. The Panthers pounce through Rob Hawkins. And they are still alive here. How quick is Hawkins? Absolute lightning. Not many players will outstrip Tom Halliwell on cover. Butler missed him, but Halliwell was still there. Just couldn't mm. get there. Yeah, Lee's just falling asleep on the blind side there. Had no one marking. And Rob Hawkins isn't the sort of player that misses opportunities like that. What a game. We've been spoilt today inside the National Basketball Centre. Fantastic facilities. I say this every time I have the privilege, yeah, Tom, of commentating on this sport. I think back to when I started commentating on it, you know, just before COVID and some of the some of the locations we were sent. You know, we had we had to had to open fire doors just to get the court in and players were scoring tries at full stretch and going out head first through the fire doors. And <laughs> now we've got we can come and have fans in places like this. It's been brilliant to watch. And you'll feel that more than anyone. Yeah, humble beginnings are, are fantastic, aren't they? Because they give yeah. you a, a point to reflect back on and how far we've come. And all of the magic venues that we've played at so far this year, uh, including the University of Birmingham, the University of Northumbria, obviously Manchester here today, have all been amazing venues to play wheelchair rugby league at. You've got a high ceiling, great lighting, opportunity for spectators to be seated. 
and the players play up to it. You know, they play yeah. to a better standard when we treat them like the athletes they are. And we had that year, didn't yeah. we, before the World Cup, where there was the extra problem of finding an indoor location, I'm talking during COVID time, that wasn't being used for vaccinations. Well, yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I actually remember um, there was a period when we, we thought the World Cup was going to be in 2021, yeah. and we were training in a church hall. <laughs> wow. <laughs> were any other events going on at the time? <laughs> <laughs> we were dancing around mass. <laughs> I was going to say, oh, but it wasn't you know, during a funeral or something like that. <laughs> Blimey. We had to kick out the local youth club. Yeah. But, yeah, it's been great to see the development of, uh, of this sport. and it's, uh, it's been fantastic to get these magic rounds, of which this is the third. And Halifax are really putting on a, a show this second half. They don't feel they're done, you know, and I think I agree with them. Two tags. 11 is Johnson. Nine is Holmes. Here comes Jeremy. If they get the next one, they will believe. Looking for support, he's done really well. Kieran Johnson again, wants a quick play. This is the last, he can't get a quick play. Tags everywhere. Where are they going to go on the last? Oh, Hawkins to himself, needs a favourable bounce. He's going to have to deal with this, Spoiled Ward. And she does, it will be a drop out. Halifax are getting the ball back here, that could have been anyone's. So first time so far in this game that Leeds have been under real pressure. Halifax have absolutely got their tails up. The It'll be interesting to see how Leeds deal with this now. Halliwell goes long. Yep. Oh, Collins and Borson, a mismatch. We felt that up here, didn't we? Oh, scaffolding was shaking of our commentary position. Easy. Now then, Hawkins again, can he get there? It's the same two. Halliwell this time makes the tackle. But there's a penalty pushed out of his seat. More pressure right. incoming calm from Halifax. Down. Okay, calm down. Calm down. Calm down. One. Holmes running Two. out of room. There goes Borson. Stop lost back. it backwards. Picked up by Holmes. Play on as you were. Hawkins wants this one, takes it on. Running into room, taking the tackle. Try. Good play. Borson to the post, scoring to the right of the post. Halifax have back-to-back -back tries. And the Panthers are very much back in the game. Don't they just look like a different team now for the first half? This is what they can do when, when they link up and they stay connected. And listen to the Halifax fans here. That was a powerful finish. Didn't look like he had the right to get down from there, Jeremy Borson. There, okay. I've had enough. Yeah, those long levers. And when he looked up and saw Nathan Collins, he would have thought, it's my perfect opportunity to just get around him, plant the ball down. Second of the afternoon for the Frenchman. With a kick now from Wade Boardman to bring us back to a six-point game. Just as we said, if Halifax could score, having been outplayed either side of the break, there's the two. It could turn this game on its head, and so it's proved. From 24 0 to 24 18, and we've still got over a quarter of the match to go. It was a great finish. Just make sure you give space at Mark, can Yeah, this Magic Weekend's not petering out, is it? We've probably saved the best contest till last, grand final rematch. So many World Cup finalists and World Cup athletes on show. And this next 10 minutes is massive. Yeah, all on. Clean. So three unanswered tries. One! From Halifax. Not straight. Oh, that's a big call. Not square. Not, Not square, square. square. I didn't see that. And Leeds have a gift here. Well, Halifax can get a roll upon you, so that's the kind of thing that can be a real momentum shifter. Well, Halifax were back-to-back, -back, weren't they? Yeah, and, and had all of the no, energy, no. all of the momentum. Boardman just rushing to play the ball there. So can what? Leeds hit right back. Halliwell. Collins is free, but Halliwell won't need him. Halliwell on his own. And the try.
try is awarded. Second of the afternoon for Tom Halliwell and Leeds respond immediately. Yeah, no nonsense from Tom Halliwell there. Oh. And there's a tangle to Boardman and Halliwell locked together. There's the finish. Halifax just claiming a little push on Wayne Boardman after Halliwell grounded the ball there. Halliwell straight away makes sure he's all right, which is good to see. Helps him up. That's it. Second of the afternoon for Tom Halliwell. It's one that Leeds really needed, actually. Yeah, great to see Tom going over to check on Wayne there. They've been England teammates for nearly a decade now since uh, Tom Halliwell broke onto the England setup. So 28 18 plus this. As we approach the final quarter of a gripping final game of this magic round of the Betfred Wheelchair Super League. Live at the National Basketball Centre this afternoon from Bellevue in Manchester on the Sportsman. Nathan Collins, who has four from four so far with this to extend his 100% run. Oh, he's hit the upright. How important could that be? Wow. That was not expected. Yeah, all right. So it's a 10-point game. Halifax just need to forget about that, pick up where they left off if they can, because they were running hot. And again, Leeds probably looking the more fatigued team so far in this second half. <laughs> yeah, I'm just looking down at the Leeds bench, doesn't look like they're interested in using any change. Allen! Oh! Oh! Halifax almost, almost scored from the kickoff. We've got a proper contest on here, George. Really excited about the last 20 minutes of this game. Oh, another look at this. Oh, that was tight. He had to make the play, Butler. That's a good restart kick. There's Borson. It's been the main danger for the Panthers. Nathan Holmes has been excellent off the bench wearing nine. Yeah, he has. I'm really impressed with Nathan Holmes. He just looks... Fit as a fiddle, doesn't he? It's just a, a, one of them really awkward players to play against. Makes it uncomfortable for you. Strong challenges. Great stamina. You can't oh, grab another off penalty you. leads his way. Oh. While Halifax have been in possession, so their last two possessions have ended in penalties going made. to the Rhinos. And James will be saying, "Stay composed. Be patient. Wait for your opportunities." I think Collins almost apologetically just pops it into touch left side. <laughs> Good adjective. <laughs> 19. Leeds just twice in a row have been gifted this brilliant field position that they haven't had to work for. Butler, Mulhall. There was a bit of frustration in that challenge what? from Boardman. Halliwell, he's the danger man this close to the line. Elusive Two. runner. Good tackle, Nathan Holmes. Yeah, well shackled by Holmes. Butler's first receiver left, only Boyd Ward back right. It is Butler running towards the post, straight into Holmes. Nathan Collins. Play. He's got Halliwell behind him. Collins fancies it himself. Can he get there? Four. As he knocked on over the light. Tackle four. I think the referee's called tackle, tackle four. Tackle just Take before tackle. the light. That would have been a great shot for the photographer there. <laughs> and once again, he's in no rush to get back up. Let's have another look. From the reverse angle, Oops. Boardman there. Boardman probably got away with the shirt pull there. Yeah, maybe. Really tough for the ref on the far side to see that. Halliwell, Butler, Borson with a big one. This is the last. Halliwell, Collins in the corner. If he can oh. find him, he can't. For once, that link up fails. If he finds him, Collins scores. They are human. There was no one at home. OK, Halifax, what? get some territory back. That's what they'll be saying to each other. Boardman, Holmes, inside of Boyd Ward, still going. Halliwell eventually with a tackle, comes out of the chair. There was no push. Nathan Holmes just 
Nathan Holmes just springs back up. And Rob Hawkins takes it on, a try scorer for the Panthers. Kieran Johnston with a 360. Four. Orson wants. Nice to Holmes. We're on Even it. Nicer to Hawkins. He won't be caught. Under the sticks for Rob Hawkins. And another terrific Halifax response. One thing to note about Halifax is they, they just love scoring tries from inside their own half. They almost prefer to launch an attack from a long distance out. The closer they get to the opponent's try line, the more they have to think about where to set up from and what plays to run. But when they get the ball deep in their own half, they can just offload and change direction and play into space. I don't think they've scored a try from inside Leeds' half, have they? Well, very cleverly there, they isolated Rob Hawkins on Jody Boyd-Ward. And the electric burst of pace got its inevitable conclusion. And this kick to take us to a four-point game, which will be the closest margin since Leeds took the lead, right at the start of the game. No mistake from Wade Boardman. And we are back to a four-point game. And you just lots of time left. Sorry, George, you're just wondering now, how are Nathan Collins and Tom Halliwell feeling, having been, been off work all week? Yeah, they both. I think they both said they work. They managed one day's work this week, <laughs> <laughs> and straight back into a Super League contest. So it's game on. Last 16 minutes. Leeds Rhinos 28, Halifax Panthers 24. Halifax, who beat Leeds 14. in the grand final. The Rhinos have been gunning for revenge since. It's been a really great game. Collins. Short. It's going to go too deep, I think. It was just carefully watched. Yeah, just got caught in the wind there. Suddenly there are a few nerves. James Simpson has retreated back behind the Leeds bench for the first time this afternoon, rather than five yards in front of it. <laughs> I was right there with him about four hours ago, <laughs> biting my nails. There were a few whispers, Tom, that you were going to... What? Name yourself on the bench today. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am there as an option if we ever are short, but I've got to say London Roosters have been uh, brilliant in recruiting this season and we've got um, a really deep squad, so I haven't had to don the, the playing shirt, which the players will probably be happy about. There's Hawkins, far side. Two tries to oh. Rob Hawkins, two to Jeremy Bolson. Here he is, the Frenchman. Oh, and he's offloaded nicely to Holmes, who pops it up again to Johnston. Still no, going still towards going. the line, he might score here. Tag Has he got first. the ball down tag just before the line? But they're knocking at the door, the Panthers, it's the last. They're millimetres short. Borson wants it, he's crashing towards the post to score! Tackle. Oh, it's a big shout. And he is tackled, and it's Leeds ball. Clutch play, Tom Halliwell. Oh, oh. Accurate defence. Tackle six. Well, he just said, give me it, let's see what happens. The Frenchman, tackle me if you can. And the answer from Halliwell Brilliant. was, you, oh, what a great shot from our cameraman as well. Yeah. That's a great shot of the fine margins in wheelchair rugby league. That was brilliant from our cameraman, Martin. Yes, Martin. Got the moment spot on. From our position high up in the commentary, I thought he'd scored. But a split Three. second, Tom Halliwell, try saber. That was uh, that was wonderful, and it keeps it 28-24 in Leeds' favour. Here comes Butler around the corner. Four. It's been a long old day here. This is the third match of our coverage on the Sportsman. Great work from uh, our camera, Martin, from Danny as well, and from, from Paul down on the court. One. Who've worked brilliantly to, uh, to bring you this terrific coverage of one of the best sports around, Wheelchair Super League. So I hope you've enjoyed it at home as much as we have enjoyed bringing it to you on the Sportsman. That's a penalty to Halifax. Yeah, let me just echo that, George. The coverage that the sportsmen give our league and our sport is second to none. And it makes a massive difference for the players. Like, it just adds an extra 10% to the way that they play. And for me as a coach, it's great to see. 
It means you can coach a game and then come and play it being a commentator afterwards as well. I'm having the best day ever. <laughs> <laughs> and we don't know which way this one's going. Hawkins, Johnston, Halliwell in the collision. If anything, Leeds look like they're more jaded than Halifax right now. 100%. They're energised by this response from 24-0 down to 28-24. If I'm not mistaken, the score was almost exactly the same as this at, at the point in um, last year's Super League Grand Final. Borson along the ground. Hawkins will get after it. Oh. He's going to stay in. It's a chase that Collins has won. Oh, and then the penalty. He didn't need to get involved, Nathan Holmes. Halifax fans, heads in their hands at that one. The tackle was complete, and then Holmes flew in. And that's another let-off for Leeds, who were trapped there. It was a good end to the set from Halifax. Let's have another look. There you go. He's already been tagged. And bang. Nathan Collins saying, what am I supposed to do with that? They're a team that often plays on the red line, Halifax. And, you know, oftentimes comes with that high error count and a high penalty count. But a lot of the time they get away with it because their athletes are just so good. Clock ticks towards 11 minutes to go. Pick a winner here. Leads in possession. They've managed to stay ahead despite this great pop up. Halifax fight back. They've always maintained their advantage leads. Halliwell. Butler. He kept quiet second half. It's a great good first here. half. Halliwell left side. Collins is outside him. Halliwell wants to go on his oh, own. Five. Big collision. Try saver, Jeremy Borson. It was an honest clash of two great players. It's the last, and Halliwell's out of commission here, so it's going to be Collins hanging back first receiver right side. He's got Butler swinging in behind him. Here we go. It is Collins. It Away. is Butler. It is that one-two, and then he offloads in touch. Boyd Ward couldn't go. She had nowhere to go. Great defence, Rob Hawkins and Kieran Johnson. Really good defensive unit work there. And you're right, they've kept Butler quiet as a mouse, really, in this cross. second half after he looked threatening every time he caught the ball. Well, he scored two of Leeds' four first-half tries. A reminder, Leeds led 24-0. So, so this has been a, a pulsating Panthers fight back second half, showing why they're the champions. Borson to Holmes, into the last 10 minutes, live and exclusive on the Sportsman. Borson again, great energy. Away. Just chucks it back, NFL style to Holmes. Four. The quarterback, here he is again, the Frenchman. Johnston takes it on, left-handed pass to Boardman. Now says, chase that if you can, oh. it's going to be too much. Eight. Butler and Hawkins hairing after it. Halifax looking really strong here at the minute. Leeds are wondering where their next try is coming from. James Simpson's just had a little glance at his bench, which is a very thin bench, just Dan Cutts and Verity Smith down there today. Yeah. But he had a little glance. I wonder what if there was a dialogue no, that he might need one of them. We'll see. No. Nine to go. It's a myth. Of course, Halifax still have Tom Martin Zero. on the sideline if they want to reintroduce him. Yeah. One of their starters. Yeah. Penalty Can't grab it. to Leeds. Tell really what, Halifax have done well with this response, bearing in mind the penalty count, which I haven't kept <laughs> kept track of, but it must be massively in Leeds' favour. It's got to be double figures against Halifax, oh, kind of and you know yeah, they, they deserve to be down on the penalty count because they've made those silly plays in a lot of cases. I was going to say, it's, it's a tough spot for Wayne Boardman as, as captain coach, really, because he is solely focused on trying to win the game here for Halifax and probably doesn't have the interchange at the forefront of his mind. There's actually, he might be... Well, he could even bring himself off here. Don't know, only he will know what the energy levels are like. Yeah. I'm just glancing down to my left and I'll be thinking, mm, Tom Martin, last five minutes or so, could be 100%. interesting. 100%. Well, Leeds, if they score next... They might not be caught anyway. Halliwell drawing the defence left side. Mulhall straightening up and getting a big hit. Just a tackle. must have heard me. Said I'm not coming off. <laughs> have some of that. Get that into you. 
<laughs> what do you know, George? Come off, George. Have you seen this? <laughs> <laughs> That's me told. Great defence from the big man. Halliwell just picks up the ball and says, Mulhall, you play it, but I want it. That's where they go. He's got Butler behind him. Collins was a dummy runner. Good sliding defence from Hawkins. Four. Tags flying everywhere in backfield. Collins has overrun it. It's going to be Halliwell with Collins right behind him. Doesn't need to lock. Collins towards the line. Fantastic. That could be the game-breaker. Nathan Collins, it's the old one-two yet again, Halliwell to Collins, and Leeds think that might be the try that wins them the game. Yeah, you can see Nathan and Tom just staying alive. As the ball gets towards the end of their set of six, neither of them want to get tackled with it, so they're both live on that play four or five so they can run that strike, and they just do it so well. They're so consistent. They, they've both got great feel for the game. They wait for the defender to go one way and create the overlap on the other side. Six tries to four. And an eight-point lead. So Halifax is going to have to find a couple of scores again. Not out of the question, of course. But every time they've got close to the Rhinos, Leeds have found just an extra gear to keep their noses in front. Yeah, been quite an ugly second half from Leeds. I think they'd, they'd admit that themselves, but great teams can do it pretty or ugly, can't they? And as we've said a few times, not looking to their bench, looking to, to back the five that started the game. And it remains to be seen if they've got just enough left in the tank to get over the line here. Well, Halifax have made a double change. It isn't the aforementioned Boardman. I think... Johnson's got off and Holmes, I believe. Unless they're just going off for a, a drink. Let's just see how they line up after this kick anyway. Uh, I'll be after your uh, player of the match as well in a, in a minute or so. Tom, here is Collins to add on another two. No mistake. So it's a 10-point lead. 34-24. And Halifax now need a big finish. So Tom Martin is definitely back out there wearing 17. And Jordan Holt is there as well. So, that, yep, that was, that was the double change, wasn't it? So Johnson's gone. And these are Jordan's first minutes of the game, I believe. So and he'll Holmes be fresh as a daisy. Short restart from Halifax. Knocked on. Oh. Knocked on by Butler. So an immediate opportunity for Halifax. What are you thinking, player of the match-wise, Tom? <laughs> Always a tight spot when it's a tight game, isn't it? Um, it's a lot easier to pick a player of the match when there's a convincing winner. Obviously, Borson's a name that we've said many times. One. Equally, Rob Hawkins has been electric down the wing. And then on the Leeds Rhino side of things, it's, it's Halliwell. Gone back. Being a stalwart in the middle, really, on Away. both sides of the ball. I think we've called his name a lot in attack, but defensively he's been brilliant. Two. But I'm going to have to go with Nathan Collins for his kicking game, his, um, his astute decision-making, and he punches well above his weight. He's, um, he's won more man of the match awards than I've had. Hawkins through. Oh, just tackled, but a penalty Second given away. Away. So they're not done yet. So the Betfred player of the match, the Leeds Rhinos number one, Nathan Collins. Off his sick bed. Away. Great oh, offload. Yeah. Halifax have another. Game on. Off the bench, you know who, I called it. <laughs> Get him on for the last five. Thanks, Georgie boy. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Martin with a finish. It was all about the offload. That's Tom. what he's been brought on for. Tom will be absolutely buzzing with that. Let's have another look. Lovely little flick ball from Borson. And how do you defend that, by the way, George? When Jeremy Borson comes in, flying in, so long and tall. What can you do there? Not a great deal. But his game back on. It's a six-point game. Martin with a great impact. Big kick. It would be nice to bring this back for Halifax to four. Boardman. Oh, he's Pulled missed it. his first one of the afternoon. I was hesitant to say four from four so far, but he has missed his first of four from five. It's still a one-score game, albeit converted score to tie now. 
two and a half to go. What a finish in prospect on the sportsman here. It's uh, it's crazy how similar this is to the the 2022 grand final. Halifax won that game with the pretty much the last play, and uh, they've got a chance to draw this one with just over two minutes to go. Collins taking his time, the player of the match. Yeah. And then goes mid-range. Clean. Boardman One. tackled by Halliwell. Borson. Strong defense. Runs straight at Collins. Plays the ball to the try scorer, Tom Martin. Two minutes to find another try. Bournemouth yeah, goes long. Good. It's the bounce of a football here. Here we go. Can Borson win the chase? Just done well, well, but Butler's done brilliant. Great chase back, and he was doing that all throughout the first half as well. Always the first chair to the ball. So Leeds will take their time. You can be sure of that. Halifax will get one more go at it. At least, yeah. Two. Butler. Three. That's the third. Collins. Just one up rugby from Leeds. Looking to eat into the oh. remaining time, of which we have a minute. Halliwell will take the drive, and then I'm sure we'll see the long kick. Yeah. Five. And Bob's at marker, so he can't get the kick. It's going to be Halliwell. He does go long. Boardman's after it. Does well. Takes it on the first bounce, then the collision. So this is it for Halifax. Here we go. Hawkins. Still going. Two. It's now or never for the Panthers. Martin. Borson down the skinny side. Still going, weaving in and out. Oh, Tom. Oh. oh, and he's called it over. Took us by surprise. Took us whistle, by eh? surprise, yeah. We've got an unofficial clock here. <laughs> we thought they may have had two more to go. But that is the end of a pulsating contest, which has been won by the Leeds Rhinos. And a worthy, worthy game to finish what's been a, a fantastic third Magic Round, Tom Coy. Yeah, I feel so grateful and lucky to, to be stood here. Um, up here with you, George, on the Sportsman. And we've seen two great teams in our sport put on a fantastic game. And... I would probably say that the deserving team wins. You know, I think I think Leeds started the game incredibly well, looked a lot more composed, more well organised, and came out on top as they should have. Yeah, they were ahead throughout Leeds, 24-0 to the good prior to that Halifax fight back, but Leeds crucially just managed to stay ahead throughout the. Players from both sides thanking the supporters who made the trip to Bellevue in Manchester, the National Basketball Centre here. The Rhinos doing their lap of honour. Halifax in a huddle at the moment. Jody Boyd Ward giving a high five. I think that was a daughter. What a great game. What a great advert. Chair Rugby League, but ultimately, courtesy of a 34 points to 28 victory, Leeds stay two points clear at the top of the table. The star man, Nathan Collins, two tries, five from six from the kicking tee. His points the difference as the Rhinos beat the Panthers. Let's run you back through the highlights from this one. It was Leeds, remember, who had the lightning quick start. And Halifax had to respond in kind second half, and that's exactly what they did, Tom. Yeah, they did. You could see it coming, couldn't you? All they needed was a, a little bit of a purple patch to get going with Hawkins and Borson and Hawkins again. Um, it's interesting to see Wayne Borman spend a lot of time out on the wing. He's normally the first to catch the ball when they play off of him, but different approach in this game. That was a big try. They were back within one score, four points, Halifax at that point, and then Tom Halliwell crashed over that man Rob Hawkins kept it interesting right till the end 
beautiful that play was. Handed yeah. Martin. Rob Hawkins was uh, voted Super League Player of the Year last year, and he, he keeps on going from strength to strength in this Halifax team. I think him and him and Borson and Bashara, if you add him into the mix, they're an incredible triple threat, aren't they? Well, it's been a fabulous day of Betfred Wheelchair Super League Rugby League here in Manchester. Tom, safe travels back. Great to have you with us. Yeah, straight back down to Medway for me, but the journey is worth it every single time. I'm sure it is. Well, it's been great to see you. Well done to your side as well. And uh, I'm sure we will see you very soon. Uh, well done to all our winners uh, today for Tom's London, who beat Wigan in the first game, 38-30. Hull FC, who were too good for Warrington in the end, 62-34. And the Leeds Rhinos, who nudged past Halifax, 34 points to 28. But a great day again for the sport of wheelchair rugby league. Three hugely watchable games uh, all available live and exclusive here from the Betfred Wheelchair Super League on the Sportsman. Thanks very much for your company. I uh, hope you've enjoyed our coverage as much as we enjoyed bringing it to you. Uh, plenty more to come of course from the Sportsman throughout the remaining months of the campaign. Uh, but for now enjoy the rest of your weekend and we'll see you next time from Tom and myself. Have a great one. We'll see you then. Goodbye. Oh, that's a big one.